Did Ford just announce the Lightning Raptor? On January 17th, Ford's CEO teased this picture with the quote, Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. In this picture, you could clearly see what looked like a Ford Lightning with a white body kit and some off-road tires covered in mud. And immediately, Raptor owners had their manhood threatened and their whole world was turned upside down. This is terrible. This is one of the worst catastrophes in the world in all of the humanity. They did. They really did. Just go, go check out all the comments in the forums. It was hilarious. In this video, we're going to cover what this truck is and what it isn't, my thoughts on it, as well as a few fellow off-roaders initials impressions on it. A lightning switch gate? Well, I have no idea what that is. You That's... haven't seen this thing? No, I've never even heard I of this. I know where you at, man. And we're gonna get ahead of the stupid comments that are gonna come from the keyboard warriors too. Dude, there's no charging in the desert. If you're new here, I'm Helio. This YouTube channel is all about off-roading with our Raptors. My kids and I show you guys how to work on your Raptors. We give out build advice based on our lessons learned the hard way out on the trails of Southern California. We bring you guys along for our adventures and we tell it like it is. Nothing is censored or sugar-coated here, just like our trucks, even our language and our opinions are kept dirty. So please give us a like or a subscribe. It really helps this channel grow and this video grow. First off, what is it? This is the Ford Lightning switch gear. It's called the switch gear because it can be configured as an off-roader or a track slash drift truck. Essentially, this truck was designed to take over for the fun haver drift truck that Vaughn drove. Ford calls it a demonstrator. Essentially, it's a concept vehicle, but it's functional. This is not a truck meant to be displayed statically like most concept vehicles. This is a running working vehicle that's designed to take some abuse and as Ford puts it, showcase the possibilities of what an electric vehicle can be and provide a playground for engineers to advance learning quickly for future electric vehicles. Switchgear specifically provides a test bed for pushing the boundaries of what's expected from electric trucks. So for your sensitive Raptor guys, stop getting your panties in a bunch. This isn't gonna replace your Raptor anytime soon. It may not even go into production, but I hope it does. This truck started life as a Ford Lightning. From the pictures, it looks like the truck cab, frame, interior, and powertrain were kept from the Lightning production vehicles. Then Ford Performance, in collaboration with RTR vehicles, made the truck wider and increased the track width from 68 inches to 80 inches with a proper off-road suspension. For those wondering, an F-150 is 74 inches and a Raptor is 86 inches wide. So it is a little bit smaller than a Raptor. They also slapped some 37 inch NATO Ridge Grapplers, covered up those tires and wider track with carbon fiber fenders and bodywork, added steel rock rails and skip plates for protection, as well as some aero styling around the cab. Bed has a tire rack sports bar thing that can carry up to two spares. And then inside they dropped in five Recaro race seats, I guess to give Joe rides on this thing. And then finally, they added a hydraulic handbrake to take advantage of all that torque on demand from the electric motors and do more sliding. First, let's cover what we all care about the most, the suspension on this thing. The Lightning Switch Gear has independent suspension on all four corners. Out front, she has custom independent double wishbone with coilovers and a sway bar, very similar to a regular Raptor. Out back, she has custom independent semi-trailing arms with coilovers. Now, this is very similar to what you see on UTVs today, kind of like that link type of setup in the back. From the pictures, it looks like they kept the truck's original suspension geometry and design. They just extended the arms a bit, similar to what we have all done with upgrading our trucks to mid-travel. The truck retains the stock spindle, knuckle, but has extended CV axles on all four corners. Coilovers are Fox 3.0s with a six inch stroke with remote resins. Switchgear did not get the live valve shocks. These are conventional shocks. Now, first thing everyone pointed out was look at how little that suspension droops. Ford showed us a few stills of this truck jumping, and they are right. There is not much suspension droop here. Front has 11 inches of travel, rear has 13 inches of travel. Now, it's important to note that the suspension travel is restricted using limit straps on all four corners. The limiting factor here are the CV axles and the electric motors. 
From the pics, it appears that the axle shafts are extended with the stock ends remaining in place. The Lightning powertrain also remains intact and the motors sit where the axles normally do and they are quite a bit larger. There is also so much travel that you can get without going even wider, limiting the suspension travel. But I also think everybody has forgotten something important here. Everybody watching this video would agree that a Gen 1 Raptor is a very capable off-roader. Uh, and to many of us, it's our truck of choice. No one can say the Gen 1 suspension is not capable. In fact, it set the standard for off-road suspension for a production truck in 2010, and it's still better than 90% of the trucks manufactured today. We've had many stock Gen 1 Raptors join us on runs and not have any issues. They keep up with us with the idiots up at the front on stock Gen 1 suspension. So when the Gen 1 Raptor first came out, how much travel did it have? In 2010, when the Raptor first came out, it had 11.2 inches of travel up front, 12.1 inches of travel out back. Switch gear has 11 inches of travel up front and 13 inches of travel up back. The Lightning Switch Gear to me is the Gen 1 Raptor of EV trucks. It's an amazing start and it one-ups the Gen 1 by having 37s and more power on tap. All right, now let's talk styling of this truck. First of all, I love it. If you've watched my videos long enough, this should not come as a surprise. We did a review on the Lightning and I love the looks back then when it first was released. I absolutely think the Gen 3 Raptor is ugly. From every angle, the trucks are lines are just off. It looks big, it looks fat. And after a few years, it still has not grown on me. The Lightning Switchgear lines are I mean, they're excellent. The fenders look great, the contours are better, and it just it just looks good. And I love the vents on the back of both of the front and rear fenders. And if you look closely in the videos, they're not just there for looks, they're actually functional vents. This truck will be spending a lot of time over the next couple of years shredding tires and dust and smoke is gonna look great coming out of those vents. Front end lines and the headlights flow great, tailgate lines and the LED lights, you know, the bars and all that stuff, they look really great. Even that little bit of aero treatment they did around the cab, I like it, but you know, as you guys know, I'm kind of partial to the Mark with fly look and the cherry on top here, they save a ton of weight because they made all those new panels from carbon fiber and added steel bumpers up front and on back for protection. To me, this is what the Gen 3 Raptor should have looked like when it first came out. I love everything about the styling on this truck. Nothing looks off to me. The Lightning powertrain and batteries remain unchanged from the factory trucks you get today. Switchgear uses the same extended range battery pack and dual motor configuration from the factory Lightning. The power stays the same too. They didn't mess with it. It is 580 horsepower, but more importantly, 775 pound feet of torque. That's 135 more torques than the supercharged Raptor R. And this is why I'm so excited about this vehicle. In all types of off-roading, what matters is not horsepower. What matters is torque. Doesn't that matter if you're doing high-speed off-roading like we do or crawling over rocks. Torque is what pushes you through the trails at speed. Torque is what gets you over that steep hill. Torque is what gets you over rocks and boulders. Torque is king off-road and the more access you have to it, the better. With an EV, you have access to torque on demand at any speed. And that's why EV off-road trucks is so exciting to me. V8s have always been the favorite engine for off-roaders because of the linear power curves that taps torque from low speed all the way up to the top end. But in the last 10 years or so, we have started to see the V8 engine die out and get replaced by smaller turbo engines. EcoBoost Raptor, for example, makes impressive power numbers at 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. That torque makes it very fun truck off-road, but it does have some turbo lag. To get that torque, you have to wait the truck to make boost and it's gone before you get to the top end. Anyone that has tried to climb a steep hill with an EcoBoost knows what I mean here. Once you hit a certain point, there is a big power drop off on the top end, but yeah, that can also be said about the V8s. V8s do need to be spooled up to generate any kind of torque. With an electric motor though, you have instant torque on demand. Does that matter if you're going two miles per hour, 100, you have access to all that torque all the time at any speed. There is no lag to generate boost. If you wanna go fast, electric motors can go zero to 60 faster than their ICE counterparts. ICE, for those that are wondering, is internal combustion engine. If you need to climb an obstacle, torque is there at any speeds up that hill. EVs don't need a low range gearbox like their combustion counterparts. Torque is always available at any speeds on demand. 
And for that reason, EV motors are already outperforming trucks on pavement and soon on dirt. I absolutely love this thing and I hope Ford brings this Lightning Raptor into production with a decent range. Now, if they do, I would love to get one, go out into the desert and fully test its range and capabilities. Hoping we get a chance to see this truck in action on the trails one day too, because it looks like it would be a ton of fun and very capable. Now, I know EVs are not for everybody. So please don't take this as you should go out and buy this or any of that BS. These are my opinions and my thoughts on this truck because of my experience with EV vehicles. I'm actually a big fan of EVs. I've owned four of these over the years. I've had BMW i3s, Tesla Model S's, Tesla Model 3s. I've experienced all the benefits and drawbacks that come with EVs. I was an early adopter of them when they started to come out and know all the ins and outs, and I currently don't own an EV because of it. But that hasn't stopped me from still being a fan. My dream one day would be to build a Raptor with Tesla Performance electric motors. Imagine all that torque and power on a long travel Raptor. Oh man, it would be so much fun. And no, no, I'm not a fan of the Cybertruck. You guys notice how we haven't done a video on the Cybertruck yet? That truck is ugly as hell. I'm not exactly convinced they will be able to handle the abuse of off-roading. You won't see a video on this channel about the Cybertruck until we get under one of those trucks and see its suspension. Again, I digress. I know EVs are not for everybody and holy crap, dude, a lot of you guys lose your minds when this truck was first announced. And I know there is going to be a lot of stupid comments on this video, so, Let's spend a couple minutes here and get ahead of those stupid comments. Dude, there's no charging in the desert. Last time I checked, there's charging stations next to all my favorite spots. Here are the charging stations near Johnson Valley and Big Bear. Here's in the Mojave. Here's Vegas Dorito. Even Moab has superchargers nearby. Most of the big off-road hotspots here in Southern California have some sort of superchargers near them today. Based on current Tesla's network, there is nowhere in SoCal and Nevada that I could not go with this truck. I could even redo my whole Moab trip that we just did a couple of weeks ago in the EV truck. Next! It's only gonna get 100 miles off-road. You can't take it anywhere. Typical Raptor run is about 150 miles per day. Some go higher, most are far less, but for the most part, off-road runs are 150 to 200 miles max per day. Now, the limitation is mainly because there may be a scab truck on the run or a tune truck. Scab trucks have a much smaller gas tank and tune trucks typically only get about 200 to 250 miles off-road before they need to top off. Untuned trucks like the Gen 2, those guys can get up to 300 miles off-road on a single 36 gallon tank with those that really take it easy getting about 350 miles off-road. My truck with all the weight and supercharger gets, if I'm lucky, six to nine miles per gallon. And I typically see 250, max 300 miles off-road. All I need from an EV truck is 200 miles of range to do 99% of the runs I've hosted over the last couple of years. Almost all the runs I've planned have starting and end points near superchargers. Today, with the current Lightning getting about 250 to 300 miles of range on the highway, I don't see why 150 to 200 miles would be possible off-road with those tires, making it more than a viable off-road truck for your typical off-road run today. And that range would last much longer if it was a slower trail. That's one of the benefits of EV. The slower you're going, the less power you're using, so the battery lasts longer. Now, regardless, I don't go off-roading without a plan, so my planning would not change. I would just be doing breakfast and dinner at the start and end of the trails, that's all. As opposed to just driving in, topping off, and then driving home and eating dinner at home. You can't just take this truck anywhere because it's too heavy. A 2024 F-150 weighs 4,200 pounds. 2024 Raptor weighs 5,700 pounds. A 2014 Raptor weighs 6,100 pounds. A 2024 Lightning with the max battery pack weighed 6,800 pounds, almost 6,900. Ford didn't release the weight of this truck, but my guess is the switch gear is right around 7,000 pounds. I mean, they use carbon fiber, so I'm sure they will save a ton of weight. This is not the horrible GMC Hummer that weighs close to 9,000 pounds and can't go anywhere. And my mid-travel truck, my mid-travel Gen 1, empty weighs 7,000 pounds on the nose when we first got her. We had to, because in California, you have to weigh a truck before you can license it. And I'm sure she weighs much more now today, but 
the switch gear here has a far better weight balance than all other trucks before it. In the off-road configuration, the switch here has nearly 50-50 weight distribution, 49% up front, 51% in the rear. That means that when she takes a jump, the front won't nosedive like it does on the Raptor R and the TRX currently do. It has a tendency to stay flatter, and in the clips, you can see the back end squatting at speed. That's a good thing. By the way, for those that aren't an edge kid, that's a good thing to see the back end squat. For off-roading like the Raptors, you want that back end to squat a little to raise the nose to deal with any obstacles that are coming up up front. It's very much like when you see a motorcycle going over whoops. They put all the weight in the back so that they can unload the front and then that allows them to skip over the whoops. The Lightning switch gear will be able to do the same and run much better without a ton of gear in the back to balance it out. And all you Raptor guys today, you know you have to put at least 250 pounds in the bed to keep the truck more controlled off-road. With an empty bed, trucks are all over the place, they're bucking due to all that front weight bias. So a more balanced weight bias means better performance off-road and you will be able to get that nose up to skip over obstacles. But dude, lithium ponds are so toxic. Do you really think the process of drilling, refining and burning oil is less toxic than saltwater ponds where they're just drying out in open air? Really? I mean, really? Your power comes from coal, so you're still polluting. Yeah, here in America, most of, the, most of the power is made from coal than anything else. But that is changing, and the pollution that comes from coal is nowhere near as bad as the pollution from refining gas and from burning gas in the engines themselves. Don't believe me? Look back during the lockdown in all the big cities. Power companies had to make more power because everybody was home and the skies and rivers and everything were cleaner than ever after just one week of cars being off the road and refining production being cut. So next. Infrastructure's not ready, man. Yeah, you're correct. Not all states can support the power demands of everybody switching to EVs, at least not yet. States like California do have a little bit of a head start and a little bit better rapport a little bit more prepared than others, thanks to like diversification of energy that they're doing it. But California still has its problems. They haven't built a single new power station in years and power demand keeps going up. Despite all that though, in extreme hot weather, we are still seeing rolling power outages here, but during the winter, we don't. Same cannot be said for anti-EV states like Texas, where the power companies intentionally screwed their customers in the name of profits by not upgrading their networks and not having the option to connect to any other network doing peak demands, completely isolating themselves. You guys are still facing problems today due to poor decisions made by power companies and legislators. EVs are coming and power companies have to prepare and they need to start now. This thing's gonna be expensive, man. It's gonna be expensive. Yeah, I agree. If it goes into production, it's gonna be very expensive. Current Platinum Lightning is $90,000 truck. A Raptor version could easily that be that or more. It could be 110, could be more. And to me, and most of us here, that's not worth it. But then again, I personally think that the Gen 3 EcoBoost Raptor is too expensive today, being in the 90s as well. And the Raptor R at 110 is definitely not worth it before all the markups. But that's also part of a bigger problem here. Trucks in general are too expensive these days. A new Bronco is in the 60s. A Bronco Raptor is in the 90s. An F-150 is in the 60s to 90s, depending on the trim. And Super Duties are over 100,000 these days. Trucks are getting way too expensive across the board and no one is buying them. I mean, who the hell wants to make a car payment over $1,500 to $2,000 a month? I remember buying an F-350 15 years ago and it was in the 50s to 60s. I remember my Raptors, I never paid over 80K for any of my Raptors. My, uh, my Gen 1 wasn't more than 70K, fully upgraded. New car prices don't make any sense. Charge is gonna take hours, man. Yeah, it can. Superchargers are getting faster and faster every day though. Today, you can get a full charge on most vehicles in 30 to 40 minutes. 10 years ago, that was over an hour. In 10 years, that could be down to 10, 15 minutes, depending on the charging technology and the batteries. Charging speeds were, are just gonna improve over time. We're still at the start of EVs and they're only gonna get better and faster as time goes on. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be more stupid questions in the comments in this video, and I can't get ahead of them all. I'm sure all the keyboard warriors won't even get to this point of the video before they post something stupid, so I'll be directing a few of you guys back to the video. All those willing to have a conversation, please type away. I'm all for it here and love the back and forth of a different opinion. Those that can't hold a conversation and want to turn into two-year-olds, please go somewhere else. Please unsubscribe, I don't care. 
don't come here. I, I would rather have a good conversation and a back and forth and we disagree than a conversation de-evolving. I mean, that's just immature. But I think more people are open to an EV off-road truck than a lot of you guys think. I'm gonna close this video with some quick takes from a few fellow off-roaders and their thoughts on the switch gear. But before I do, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Are you all for this truck? Are you gonna pass on it? Should Ford bring it into production? I think they should. Questions or comments below. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Thank you guys for watching. And please check out these takes from some fellow off-roaders as we talk about the new Lightning Switch Gear. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, we got Mark here with this thing. And what do you think about the new Switch Gear, the Lightning? It's very interesting. I think the front suspension looks cool. I'd like to learn more about the rear suspension. I don't know what they're gonna do with the independent rear. How are they going to get some travel out of it? Yeah, that's that's the one thing that, that kind of worries me, right? Because it is only getting 11 inches up front and 13 in the back, and it's limited by the CV axles, you can tell. Yeah. And it's basically like, um, it's kind of like a, a UTV back end, yeah. the way that's set up. I think it's cool because of the torque, man. It's got more torque than an it R. It's cool, and it's probably fun to drive. Yeah. But when you get used to something like this, something like that is a no-go for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My brother owns a Lightning, and it's an awesome truck. I love it. See, now, did you know, though, that the travel numbers, though, are very close to what the Gen 1 was when it first came out? Really? Yeah. That's interesting. So, to me, it's the Gen 1 of EV Raptors. Okay. Which I think is freaking cool, dude. And it's, it's a cool it's start. It's cool that Ford did it. It's a I cool start. It's cool that they started and they did it. Yeah. and and I, where it goes. And I think a lot of it has to do with, it's also a drift truck. So the front end is set up so that they can lower it and do it as a drift truck and then bring it back up and do it as an off-road truck. Okay. So that's probably why, because it, it is limited at 11 and 13, so it can probably do a little bit more, but it'll yeah. destroy the CVs. Yeah. It's yeah. a pretty cool truck. It, it was cool. I know my brother was excited about it. Now, would you buy one though? No. <laughs> Not having this. Yeah, especially after this. going to that. I don't blame you there. Yeah. All right, thanks, Mark. So, Neil, yeah, what are your good. thoughts on the Lightning Switch Gear, man? Honest th thoughts on it. I think the thing's awesome. Right? I, mean, I, I looked at it, it's got a well thought out plan. You know, I just wonder how long the batteries are going to last, but in the desert, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. The first company that comes out with a quick release battery exchange, it's going to tear the desert up. What's cool is the, the power, right? Over 750 pound feet of torque. I think it's almost 760. So it's more than the R. I mean, off the bat, it's going to be fast. Ridiculously fast. If anyone's ever driven in a Tesla, you know, when they put that thing in ludicrous mode, yep. you know what that thing's going to be like. That yeah, Tesla Cybertruck and this switch gear are going to be amazing in dude, the dirt. Torque on demand on the trails. You'll be able to climb anything. You'll be able to do anything you want with that thing. Yep. No lag. Nothing at all. Instant power. All right. Thanks, Deal. All right, Eddie. What do you think of the new Lightning switch gear? I don't know what that is. You don't know what it is? <laughs> How lightning... did you not know what it is? Are you stuck in the shop all the time? A lightning switch gate? Well, I have no idea what that is. Did, is Kevin overworking you, man? <laughs> no, what the, what is so, that? So, lightning switch gear is this new truck that, based on the lightning platform, that's basically a, a Raptor. It's a lightning Raptor. Okay. You that's... haven't seen this thing? No, I've never even heard right, of Neil, this. Neil, where you at, man? <laughs> I need your help here, man. Can we show this man some pictures of the lightning? Switch gear? Yeah, the switch gear, which is really, it's really the lightning Raptor. Yeah, I'm that's... surprised you haven't heard of it. No, is it still independent suspension and all that? Yeah, it's a four-corner independent suspension. Like a 7,000 pound independent suspension drive. <laughs> all based on the Lightning platform. <laughs> that's crazy. What do you think? Look at the fenders. Yeah, it's a cool looking body kit. Uh, they put, what do they do to the cab? It's all, so it's oh, kind of like a narrow. Cage, it's got yeah. like a, you gotta see the cage thing in the back. But I think, I think the fenders look good. The travel's not there, right? It's only it's got, got like a overhang on it for Whoa. like the. They made it like an avalanche yeah. or something. Well, no, it's got. It, they're like wind resistant things, so it doesn't catch the cage. Yeah, it's an aero thing because it's uh, also okay. a drift truck. It can be configured as an off road truck or a drift truck. I could see that being a fun drift truck. Oh, and yeah, that right there is supposed to be like a replacer for the fun hammer. I don't know if you remember Von Gaines' yeah, fun that, hammer. Uh, the Ranger he had, right? Yeah. 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 So it can actually jump, but it's only doing 11 inches up front, 13 in the back. Mm. Well, <laughs> think about it though. That's Gen yeah. 1 Raptor numbers when they first came out, dude. That's true. That's true. So it's not too bad. we will be a comfortable truck, that's for sure. What do you think? Would you get one? No. <laughs> not unless they put a V8 in it. Right? All right. Thanks, man. So we got Nate. Nate, you're the owner of this crazy Elite HM truck, right? I am. So yeah. what are your thoughts 
on the switch gear, the lightning switch gear. Uh, I love it. Now you have a lightning, right? Yes, I just got it. So what are the, why do you think it's great, man? Because a lot of people are hating on the switch gear. Uh, people just don't like change. <laughs> uh, why, why are they hating on it? No, just why, why would you like it, man? I know oh, my reasons. The power, the torque the is going to be great. The power, the torque, I mean, it's, there's no warm up, there's no oil changes, everything's instant. It's there's no lag? No lag on demand. One of my guys that works with me, he has the Lightning, and I've, I've driven his a bunch of, and I've driven my friend's Teslas and stuff, and it, I, I'm excited. I'm, it is, it's just the best truck I've ever driven. <laughs> it is. I mean, I, and I have a Raptor. I have, I have this one, and I have another Raptor. Dude, you have an Elite. You have, have an HM's elite. elite, man, and that thing's a beast. Yeah, but I mean, the new Lightning's faster than my Porsche, so I mean, <laughs> the, thing is, the thing is, the thing is awesome. Right on, man. Electric vehicles. I mean, once they figure out the battery and everything, it'll, it'll. Yeah, and I think that's it, right? We're still too early, so they still got to figure out the batteries, but the motors are there. Yeah. The motors are there. The power's there. Yeah, we just need better there. batteries. Yeah. Batteries. And better charging. Yes. Quicker yeah, charging. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah, no worries.